Awesome. Uh, 2.01 Atlantic Standard Time. Uh, let's get uh, things rolling. Uh, thank you very much for uh, taking some time to join us. Uh, my name is Brian Murray. I'm the managing partner at Reach. Um, I'm joined by a good friend of mine and uh, an integration partner with Reach, uh, Peter Woodford. Um, Peter is the uh, CEO of, um, of Atlas and Eli, and uh, we're going to uh, spend the next uh, 35 to 40 minutes uh, talking to you about uh, what Reach is currently doing in the area of emergency response, um, how Peter is bringing um, location awareness to schools uh, using the Eli platform, uh, and um, um, kind of detailing uh, what the future uh, looks like for both of our companies and, and how we're going to be able to help you. Um, I guess first and foremost, we have a bit of a, bit of a mixture of people on on the uh, the webinar today. Uh, we have some international schools that are kind of joining us uh, from South America. We have uh, some current reach schools. We have some current reach schools that are already using EMS, um, and we have some uh, schools here in North in in the U.S. that um, are are potentially new to reach. So um, I thought that the the right uh, cadence would be just a quick overview of what EMS does. Um, where it evolved from, uh, a very quick demo of a fire or evacuation drill, um, a little bit of a conversation about what's coming um, inside of REACH as it relates to EMS, um, and then a, a detailed look at how Atlas is working with schools to provide greater GPS accuracy of students in emergency. Um, so that's the agenda. Uh, feel free at any point to um, ask a question in the Q&A. Um, our, our colleagues, uh, Emily and Claudia, are going to be uh, checking out the, the questions and can answer, or they'll even interject and we can uh, bring that to the entire group. Uh, there will be also time at the end for questions. Uh, excited. Let's, 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 let's go. So uh, I think it's important for you to know that I, I, I have been a Dean of Students for a lot of years. Um, I used to be the fire guy. I would hold up the red card and the green card uh, based on uh, if my advisees were here or not here. Uh, we would run back. We would cross-reference our SIS to make sure that we're not missing a student. And then we would give an all clear. And um, when REACH started, I, I guess I found it horribly inefficient that that's how we were managing these kind of crises. Uh, I was in Saudi Arabia last week, uh, had an opportunity to sit in on an actual fire drill uh, evacuation, and I also sat in on a lockdown procedure. And real-time data in those situations, in those scenarios, um, is incredibly important uh, to bring a real sense of safety to your community and to make sure that everybody is accounted for. So when we started uh, to look at how emergency response can help schools, um, we, we, we really wanted to, to um, bring flexibility around location tracking, real-time attendance, communication, the ability to report, um, the ability to create profiles. And so a fire is managed differently than a lockdown versus an earthquake versus a hurricane. And so to give schools uh, the flexibility to, to build out different workflows, build out different communication um, rhythms and patterns, um, as well as trying to grab GPS data of a student or a staff member to know if they're okay or not okay. So that's where this all started from. And again, these are the kind of the, the, the uh, pillars that we used to start to build out the system. Communication, account, for, pe account for, for, for people in your community, really try to give precise location understanding of the staff and students. Your school has a different workflow than another school, so being able to customize those workflows. And then maybe the most important in all of this is being able to review how it went. Uh, whether it was a real uh, world or a drill, um, let's review so we can build better for next time. Again, I'm going to take you through this right now uh, for the schools that have not seen it in action. Um, but essentially, you're going to trigger an emergency. You're going to account for people in your community. You're going by through taking a roll call. Uh, you can uh, be in contact with people in your command and control center. Uh, you can send messages uh, to the community, whether it's a it's a group school-wide communication or it's to an individual um, student or faculty, uh, and using uh, GPS 
and Atlas, you can really start to understand uh, where the emergency is happening, uh, who is where, and what their status is. So this is the process. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, this is inside the Reach platform. Again, uh, Reach has been built to try to, to manage and help you um, drive process in the area of student life. Lots of systems out there uh, help you manage the LMS and the student information systems. We're, our driving force is really to, to help you drive uh, things that are happening outside the classroom. Um, Reach has mobile apps um, that students and staff will install on their phones, uh, as well as a web platform. The scenario is the following. Uh, Mr. Murray, me, I'm walking through campus and I see your library and the library is on fire. There's smoke bellowing out of the library. At this point, as a staff member, I'm gonna grab my phone. Theoretically, I'm going to open it up. And I now have the ability to trigger an emergency. Each one of these profiles has been designed by you as the school uh, around what your protocols are. And in a fire, in my pretend fake school, we are going to evacuate, we're going to take attendance, and we're gonna account for everybody that are in muster stations. Again, you may run emergencies a little bit differently uh, that you may not be mustering altogether. You may be mustering different places, which is another reason why you need some real-time understanding of where these students are. So I'm gonna trigger this in a high severity fire. A few details, library is on fire. Oh my, uh, I am calling 911. Upon submission, I'm asked to confirm. Once I confirm, things start to happen within the system. The first thing that happens is an email, text message, and push notification are now sent out to all students, all staff, and all faculty. And it's prompting them to open up the Reach app. This screen here is an administrator screen. So it, 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 Peter, in this scenario, is the fire marshal. He is the guy that's overseeing the entire emergency. So Peter's view is a little bit different. Peter is going to, because he's in charge and because his the group of incident commanders that he's involved with are now responsible for accounting for students, he sees this screen. At the moment of go or the moment of, of bang or boom or whatever you want to call it, the system knows that there are 167 students in your community and staff that need to be accounted for. At this moment, none of them, we don't know anything about any of them because it just started. This map is going to indicate where they are in real time based on the location of their phone. And lastly, we can now push updates in real time to the community. I can say, please report to the gym to muster by advisor. This message has now been blasted out to the community and it is um, viewable by all teachers and all staff in real time. I can chat, there's one-to-one -one chatting that has been set up. So if I need to get a hold of Libby Smith, she's a sophomore, hey, are you okay? Libby can now respond directly and then again, we have the instant command team uh, is on this chat line. And that instant command team can say, uh, heading to the gym now, uh, bring the walkie. That now has been sent out to your defined instant command team. So at this point, we're waiting for people to now engage with system. I'm gonna show you quickly what the student sees. This is the student app. They've got a buzz on their phone, text message has arrived, and when they open up Reach, they're directed to this screen. Essentially, the first thing that they're asked to do is tell us your location. And I'm going to get into greater location awareness, and actually Peter's going to detail that a little bit later on. But right now, I'm grabbing the phone GPS. So the student has allowed that to happen. And then the student has to tell the school, I'm safe, I'm unsure, I'm in danger. What are you, student? 
that student, for whatever reason, feels they're in danger. So immediately, I'm in danger selected. The student, and in the kind of the training, the preparation for all of this, all you need to tell the kid is follow the instructions and get accounted for. That's your job as a student. So the directions are predefined, and right now Peter is unaccounted for. You'll notice on this screen, the fire commander is seeing that Peter has marked himself as in danger. I have several options for Peter. I can mark him and call him. I can send him a text message. I can chat with the student directly. What's wrong? And I can also view his GPS. So this GPS grab was through triangulation of cell phone, cell tower, and whatever math is involved in that triangulation, just like you would get in, in any other app that you're using today. Uh, in a moment, I'm gonna detail um, the work that, that Eli and Reach are doing to give you much more specific information as to the location of that student on campus. Um, and, and it's one of the things that we've been asked for over the last year is to improve that signal. Uh, but literally right now, this is the building that I'm in uh, as the user, but my office is actually located not at the front, but at the back of that building. So at this point, all we know about Peter is he's showing he's in danger. The staff member, this is the staff. As the staff member opens up reach, they're gonna be asked the same thing. Share your location and what's your state? Are you okay? Are you in danger? What's going on? This staff member says, sure, I'll share my location on my mobile and I'm actually safe. I'm good, don't worry about me. I'm now responsible for taking attendance of the people and the students that are with me. So as I'm starting to mark students off, you'll notice those numbers on the left-hand side of the screen are starting to change. And as I account for kids, Peter, the, the incident commander, can very clearly see that these students have been accounted for. As a staff member continues, The goal here is to move 153 unknown people to safe. We still have that one student that is showing in danger. So that's a problem. That one student that's showing in danger is Peter. Peter runs up to me. He's on the field. He's frantic. I see him and I say, Pete, everything's okay. I'm okay. You're okay. At that moment, I check him positive. His status then updates. No longer is he showing in danger. He's now showing as accounted for and safe. And it also tells you that Brian Murray marked him present and safe at 1.14 p.m. So ideally, the idea is to move through all of your advisor groups, all of your classes, however you're mustering, and collect the information uh, as to how students are and that you've accounted for them. Two things that have kind of bubbled to the top over the last probably six months has been students not having cell phones. So the whole purpose of the way we built it is the redundancy. So if a student doesn't have a cell phone, it still allows a staff member or a faculty member to account for them. So even though a student has not indicated their state, a staff member is going to have access to this information and will approve and check that student off. So this is not reliant on a student having a cell phone. As we, as I saw it firsthand last week when I was in Riyadh, um, this school, uh, very secure. They ran a fantastic fire drill. Uh, they accounted for all 11 uh, students, uh, about 1,700 students in about 11 minutes. Um, but there was no real-time data. So there was a lot of cross-referencing, a lot of walkie-talkie talk to make sure that they had everybody. Uh, what we are trying to offer is a much smoother roll call and attendance for that incident. In a nutshell, that's what EMS does. And um, upon ending that emergency that you've accounted for everybody in your community, um, the uh, incident commander can end the emergency Everybody will receive a message. 
and the system will return back to normal. Um, you can now pull reports out of reach to look at um, different metrics around how long it took to account for your community, who was accounted for, what the communication chain looked like, um, and so on. So um, I'm, I'm actually really proud of how this has all come about and how we've constructed it. Um, having worked in schools for a long time, uh, I think I really saw the need to remove the red card and green card uh, process and digitize that uh, while providing some real-time uh, information, real-time uh, data. Um, I'm just going to turn it over to uh, Peter, uh, because one of the things that, that um, you know, we've been really focused on at REACH is um, getting feedback uh, and upgrading, uh, creating, um, you know, I, I think, enhancements in system that we didn't know we needed uh, two years ago when we first started this venture. Um, and one of those things has been uh, a, a greater understanding of the location of students. And so I'll turn it over to you, Peter, um, to detail a little bit what Atlas uh, does and, and the plans for our integration. Excellent. Thanks very much, Brian. Um, my name is Peter Woodford. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Eli Technology, and, and we own the Atlas service. <clears throat> I've got a, over 20 years experience in emergency services and have been involved heavily with uh, industry associations, both in Europe and North America, sitting on a variety of committees and, and projects and so forth. And part of what that experience brings to the table is we understand what 911 needs in order to provide an effective response to your school. And that's kind of where we created Atlas, where we um, match up or marry our patented indoor location uh, with uh, floor plans and deliver them through high quality applications like EMS. So it's a marriage of best in class uh, location capability with floor plans with best in class uh, emergency uh, management services apps like, uh, like EMS. And that's what we're so excited about with our partnership with, uh, with REACH. Um, what Atlas is, is in verified indoor location. What the differentiator there is, is that we use uh, verified location data points, which are internet access points to, that are geo-referenced uh, spatially so that we're able to calculate not only a precise indoor GPS, if you will, uh, but also provide a dispatchable address, which means street, uh, floor, and room number. And that's the type of information that first responders require in order to provide an adequate response to any type of an emergency that you may experience at your school. Anything from a slip and fall where someone's injured all the way up to and including uh, lockdown situations uh, like the example Brian provided with, with the uh, fire. Uh, one of the things we'll talk about it in a slide or two is reunification and the ability to identify uh, when there is a, a, a evacuation order, uh, being able to track and understand and account for uh, all of the students and staff that are under your duty of care uh, and our location capability is able to do that. The key thing with our location capability matched up with EMS is that we use existing infrastructure and architecture. So there's actually no new network to buy. You don't have to buy beacons, uh, install them, manage and maintain them. We use what you already have in your campus. Uh, we offer a free onboarding service. So we just require you to send us the data and our team will accurately make sure that all the data is received, uh, geospatially prepared so that we can provide uh, certain things such as accuracy to less than three meters or nine feet. Uh, everybody else in the industry is at 150 feet or 50 meters, uh, and we're under nine feet, and we're able to do that in any area of your facility or on your campus. So it's uh, highly accurate. It gives the first responders and the incident commanders, which could be either internal to your school or external, the actionable intelligence they need to effectively assess, uh, create an action plan, and execute that action plan at a very high level to provide uh, safety and security for all the students and staff. Can I so, um, can can I just uh, ask a question, Peter, or maybe even uh, I, I'm I'm uh, 
not as smart as Peter on this call. So sometimes I have to ask him super, super simple questions. And uh, one of the things that I, I um, have learned about Atlas is, um, you know, the, the ability to use current infrastructure. Uh, the, the, the biggest challenge your school might have is finding the, the floor plan. Uh, as we've started to onboard schools, they're coming back and saying, oh, we don't have a drawing for that. Uh, Peter and his team have a plan uh, that they can help with that a little bit. Uh, from, from my perspective, the idea simply is floor plan. IT tells us where the access points are for internet. Uh, we map that. And then Atlas has created the technology to supply the information back to reach to tell us what access point and how far away that student or staff is from that access point. And then we can show you that in EMS. Um, it, it is, uh, it's great tech. It also uh, provides a service that, that we don't have. Um, so it, it made perfect sense that, that uh, we were able to partner with Atlas. Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> so this technology, as we indicated, is, is significantly better than anything else in the marketplace. We have uh, over 70 patents internationally. Um, we respect uh, all privacy rules and regulations, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we'll also provide onboarding to ensure that all the data is received accurately. Uh, everything is registered correctly so that we can provide you uh, with uh, services with accuracy under nine feet. We can provide reunification, which is a really big one in a major incident, so that if you're responsible for uh, there's 16 kids that are unaccounted for, with our capability and the ability to do indoor and outdoor, we're able to accurately notify where uh, the 16 unaccounted students would be located, whether they're hiding in a closet uh, under the football stadium or they've got scared and they ran home. Um, it's a very cost efficient and easy to install. You can sign up if you're a REACH customer already. Uh, you could sign up in the morning and be activated in the afternoon. And REACH and Atlas together provide you with all the information that you're going to need. So again, it's accurate, precise, right down to room and floor number. Uh, we can account for and in, in, in support of EMS and the accountability piece, whether or not there's 16 or 22 people in in these required areas, uh, that's all provided for you. Next slide, Brian. Great timing on the emergency uh, um, bells behind you too, Peter. I don't know if you planned that on as, as part of the webinar, but it was perfect. I had to call in a couple of favors for that. So, <laughs> so I guess the long and the short of it, and this is probably the most impactful for you in the audience, is that today the location capability uh, for all safety apps is what you see see uh, on your left, which is an estimated location with a search area provided by either Google or Apple, whatever the uh, uh, devices that you're utilizing. And with Atlas on the right, what you get is the dispatchable address in the box in the bottom uh, center, uh, the street, the town, the street, uh, the floor, and the room number. Today, visibility and the location capability would likely get you to the front door or the service address of the campus, but they don't have visibility into where the incident or incidents are taking place on campus. And that's what Atlas is able to do is to indicate clearly on the uh, floor plan where the incident is taking place, the best entryway or exit way to utilize uh, to get the most effective and efficient response possible. Um, so that's what we do. we do. Best in class EMS module, which is uh, I've been in the industry a long time and it's probably the best one that I've seen that's in the marketplace. And that's why we're so excited to be working with REACH uh, and have the opportunity to meet with your uh, REACH customers uh, with best in class indoor localization that uses ex existing infrastructure. So there's nothing to install or maintain and all the installation and activation work is done by, by us. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Um, what, one more thing I'd like to point out um, um, is, uh, oh, two more things actually. Um, a little bit of the roadmap um, as to kind of where, where we're, uh, what we've heard from current users of EMS and, and where we'd like to go. Um, 
Custom audiences is our first focus. Um, there may be scenarios, um, and again, to be really frank with you, we didn't predict this. We didn't see it when we first started uh, the build, uh, where we need to be able to define inside of reach a subset of students and staff that may be involved in an emergency, but not include other groups in the school. So for example, if you're a boarding school uh, and there's an incident in one of your dorms, the protocol is to evacuate that dorm only, um, you can't today. You have to kind of send that message out and the evacuation goes to the entire school where there may be a subset of people within your community, whether that's um, you know a group of people that have traveled to um, you know um, to Mexico City on a on a field trip um, to uh, again a dorm. So custom audiences uh, we're looking at releasing as part of EMS 2.0. Um, many, 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 many schools have said, listen, we need a panic button. We need a student to be able to initiate a panic button if they're you know, being followed or there's an incident on campus and they need the ability to, uh, to tell somebody that, hey, I'm in trouble. Here's my location and send that out to uh, the people that care about them. That's what we're going to build um, kind of in 2.0. There is a composite of it today. Um, it's just not, uh, doesn't have everything else that was needed. Peter talked about reunification. Um, we've been told by several sets of experts that uh, reunification um, is, is equally as important uh, when accounting for students and making sure that the community is brought back together and everybody's safe. So a smarter reunification process is on the way, asking for confirmation uh, of safety uh, post-emergency. Uh, the the uh, I think probably the biggest requested feature is looking at uh, integrating classes in Reach. Right now, if you're a Reach user, you, you know that uh, you can create very robust groups where we're pulling these groups in from the SIS community. Uh, you can filter by dorm. You can do all kinds of things. What you can't do today is be able to grab um, class information in a smart way. Uh, so we're going to um, start to really be more mindful about pulling class rosters into reach. Uh, so second period math class on day two can be triggered and uh, a much smarter way to take attendance and accounting for those kids during the academic day. And then um, the work with Eli will continue. Um, as Peter mentioned today, um, we can give you in the reach app, the room and the location of that student uh, using Eli's technology uh, outside of the phone's GPS. Uh, but there are some plans uh, in, in the works to offer greater enhancements around the maps, uh, being able to show specific floor plans uh, and to grow that technology even further. The, the Just, sort of, if I can add to that, Brian, uh, yeah. one of the services that is actually in testing now and will be ready by the end of the month, um, is if there's an incident in a, uh, a remote area of campus. So let's say that there is a, a student or a staff member uh, that slips and falls on a stairway. <clears throat> Today's localization capability wouldn't be able to identify that they were in the stairway and then have to go searching for them. Uh, with the enhancements that will be in production before the end of the month, uh, we're able to specifically locate within nine feet someone in a stairwell in a closet or hiding under a desk and then accurately put that on a floor plan and send it back uh, so to the people that have to render that response. So the uh, it's best in class and getting better and we're excited to be working with all of you. Um, one a question just came in on the Q&A that uh, is a good one. Um, is there capability to contact parents? And so there is. So in the profiles of each of these emergencies, you can determine who you're going to contact. And so there may be a scenario where you want to um, contact a, a subset of parents. Maybe you are, a, again, a boarding school, you have domestic students uh, and international students. Maybe you want one group of messaging to go to domestic parents and the other set another message to go to international parents. So when we work through uh, the setup with you, we'll show you how to construct these, um, these different types of messages. You can even delay sending them. Maybe you don't wanna send a message about a, a, a hurricane um, to parents right away. Maybe that comes five minutes after the initial trigger happens. So um, yeah, thanks for the question. You, you absolutely can trigger 
trigger uh, to parents and communicate with parents through the system. Uh, the last thing I'd like to detail for you is um, uh, another partner uh, that um, you know we've we've secured. Um, ClearPath um, really fills a void that we have in in our process. So uh, we're a software company. I ran so I ran boarding schools. I know a lot about boarding schools. Um, I know a lot about day schools. I do not know. I'm not an expert in emergency management, and I'm not emerging an expert in crisis management. Certainly, we, I've run them. So part of the journey for us has been to try to partner uh, with experts and find people in in the industry um, that can go in, can do an assessment can uh, do the work, what we call left of boom or left of bang uh, before the emergency happens to make sure that there is a plan in place. And so ClearPath um, has created a, a platform that, um, that we partner with. And the job of ClearPath has been to make sure that you as a school are prepared for what's coming. So the work that's done left of bang in, in the preparation. And that, that can be around process, protocol, asset, um, or even just getting some, some expert level advice as to what best practice is globally. Um, there'll be more coming in the following months around totality and the work that, that uh, ClearPath does in their system. Uh, but I did wanna introduce it because that's our mindset here is to try, we're experts in certain things. Um, ClearPath is an expert in getting you ready for that emergency. Um, and, and so uh, there's a, an upcoming webinar uh, with Mike Johnson, um, who is the CEO of ClearPath, that we'll introduce you to, and he can take you through some of his work and what he does. Uh, we're just trying to connect our schools with uh, the best people. So um, ClearPath, uh, uh, check them out. Uh, they, the, I, I think that they'll fill a void uh, that lots of schools tell us that they have. They're looking for me to fill that void and, and I can help out, uh, but I really want to find an expert and, and ClearPath is. So uh, questions, I think Claudia has been fielding questions um, and Emily as the, uh, as the uh, session has been going here. Uh, we have a few more minutes uh, as we um, start to firm up the Q&A here. Let me just see if there's anything I can pull. Uh, Claudia, yes, I can answer that one. So the, the question is, uh, uh, the, an individual asked to have an emergency mapping completed through an outside vendor and has been provided to our local responders. Is it possible to integrate those maps into the location mapping? Uh, One hundred percent. We're uh, pride ourselves in being technology agnostic. So whatever maps that you have that you had for, or in this case from uh, another vendor that uh, delivers it to us, uh, we can ingest that into our system quite easily, uh, georeference it, and then we're able to plot the accurate location of the incident or reunification protocols on the map and then deliver that to 901. One of the things with your mapping provider being providing the maps to 911 is that having a floor plan is valuable um, because they have an idea of the geography that they're working in. Without an accurate verified location plotted on that map and then delivered to the first responders, uh, they're not sure where the incident's taking place, what entryway they should use, those types of things. So matching them up together uh, gives uh, 911 exactly uh, what they need to see in order to, to, to assess the situation and deliver it to the first responders. So yes, we can integrate any maps that you currently have. Uh, a question came in regarding kind of building this out uh, and the daunting task, uh, depending on your role at the school. Uh, some schools have, um, you know, critical response teams uh, that they have on their campus. Other schools have like, a teacher who's been told you're there now the emergency response person. Um, and so one of the reasons I wanted to partner with um, with Totality is to help provide some expertise if you need it. Um, otherwise, our team internally um, can help you build out the profiles. You know, you probably as a school already have uh, a set of criteria that you expect your school to do in a crisis. Um, so far, we've been able to translate most of that inside of REACH. Um, and so your processes uh, don't necessarily change or have to change. Uh, you can translate that information inside of REACH. Um, so 
I, I think we can help you um, kind of build that out uh, as um, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out what's the best way to keep things safe. Um, had a great question from uh, some friends at, I think Westminster, uh, they're asking about uh, different integrations uh, that are planned. Um, certainly uh, integration partner with Eli is, is well underway and version one has been complete. Um, there is plans to uh, integrate with Alertus. So anybody that is not aware, Alertus is a um, really a hardware company that puts units, uh, boxes around campus, and it's a way to trigger an emergency as well as to alert your campus of a, of a crisis. And so um, um, there have been certainly requests from our schools to say, hey, listen, how great would it be to be able to trigger Alertus and then have reach start or vice versa, trigger and reach and then have Alertus start. Uh, so we've been in contact with the team at Alertus. Um, we have uh, uh, some schema now to work with and uh, it's 100% on our roadmap um, uh, for uh, version two of EMS. Um, single wires, the other integration um, partner that we're, we're looking to build out for. So thanks for the question. Awesome. Um, so post this, uh, if you're interested, you need more training, you're like, yeah, I'd love to talk to a consultant about, um, you know, our current processes. Um, please reach out. Uh, we're going to send off to you uh, this recording. We'll include links for uh, information about Eli. We'll include links about um, Totality and the work that ClearPath is doing. Um, we'll also, uh, you know, you can certainly schedule time uh, on our calendars here at REACH to, uh, to demo it even in greater detail. Um, or if we've forgotten something, like, please tell us. Um, or if you need something, like, we want to know um, because uh, this is really all about trying to build a, a, a system that's going to keep your kids safe um, and your community safe. So, um, Thank you very much. Uh, I, I certainly appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we'll get this video out to you. Um, uh, just also to mention, uh, if you'd like to, if you need some help selling uh, reach in your inside of your school to your to your team, uh, we've just launched a new video which details. Uh, in a much nicer way, what I've talked about today in terms of how EMS works uh, in four minutes. Um, so um, we'll also send you a link to, to our new video, which also highlights the work that Eli is doing. Oh, there are. Perfect. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you, Peter, for joining. And uh, I, I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.